The third and longest phase, of course, is uh, the operation phase. So let's take a look at uh, this phase. So we have the operation of the PV system, which lasts uh, at least for 20 or even 25 years. Um, so what are the tasks uh, of this uh, third phase? First of all, we have to take a look at the monitoring system. So you need a system which uh, collects uh, all relevant data uh, about the yield production. Uh, mainly, um, this is mainly done by the inverters. Uh, but of course, you get also information from uh, weather stations uh, about the irradiance, about the ambient temperature, etc. So we'll have a look at this. Then, of course, you will need an uh, O and M concept. So that means operation and maintenance. So that uh, that uh, operation and maintenance means that uh, someone is taking care. Uh, someone is using uh, the monitoring system to uh, identify our failures or malfunctions. And then a technician can go on site and uh, fix this uh, this problem. Uh, of course, there are regular visits on site. Um, if you have a ground mounted system, you need someone to do the landscape maintenance. Um, so that's included in the operation and, and, and maintenance uh, task. Uh, what you also have is, of course, uh, a failure analysis in case of any uh, severe malfunction, what's about uh, the warranty issues, etc. Um, but that's mainly again a task of the operation and maintenance um, part uh, as uh, this uh, company uh, or, the, the, or the owner of the PV system must uh, take care about the own um, PV system. What is the goal, of course, of this uh, of this system or of this of this phase? Uh, of course, uh, a large a yield production. So, of course, you want to get the maximum out of your PV system uh, regarding uh, finally the revenue you can make um, with the PV system. So um, you have to ensure that the, uh, that you get the maximum yield from your PV system. First of all, we'll have a look at the monitoring concept. How does this uh, typically look like? What do you need for a PV system? So we have all the components, uh, the modules, the inverter, uh, the energy meter, a transformer, if this is a large system, which uh, feeds in uh, not to the low voltage, but to the mid voltage or high voltage grid. We have the sensors and all these uh, components um, provide data and uh, these data can be used uh, to analyze uh, the system state. So what do we have? We have the modules on the one hand, um, so the PV modules. Uh, these modules uh, can be uh, fit with the sensors. So what you get is that you get the direct current and uh, you get the module temperature. So that the direct current measured uh, by um, uh, electric device, you get uh, the module temperature, which is measured on the backside degree of the modules, which helps uh, you to identify uh, issues regarding uh, the, the efficiency of modules, if this is a, a efficiency issue or if there might be an technical issue. Then uh, we have the inverter. Um, so the inverter transforms uh, the AC uh, voltage to uh, the DC voltage to AC voltage. Um, so these uh, devices provide uh, widespread of data. So we have on the from the DC part, uh, we get the current, we get the voltage, we get, of course, the power um, of the DC part, so uh, coming from the internet connection of the modules regarding uh, the number of modules in string, the number of strings you have. This provides you uh, different values regarding current voltage. 
uh, and the, in which it uh, collects this data and you can, can read these, this data by a data logger. Then on the IC, uh, AC side, of course, you get the same values. You have the current, you have the voltage, and you get power information. What you also get is, uh, of course, information about the grid frequency. Uh, which should be at uh, 50 hertz uh, plus minus 0.2 hertz so that's the welded uh, bandwidth and of course the inverter must uh, check uh, the grid frequency in case of any deviation from this uh, um, nominal value of 50 hertz uh, the, the inverter has to interact um, of course there are more values uh, provided by the inverter like the insulation resistance for example inverter that's the resistance um, so of course it, it, it's a security check if there might be any broken cables um, in the field so then the insulation resistance would, would drop um, you get also information about the device temperature And finally, you get status messages. So what's about any other issue? Is the inverter running on, on MPP status or are there any issues uh, with the grid or uh, something else? Then you get information uh, about this, this status. What you then might have, not in all cases, uh, but uh, what might be uh, which is typically um, installed if you have a, a large utility scale system which is feeding the energy to the mid or high voltage grid you had you have a transformer um, so let's make this this way so like this so that's the transformer uh, of course this gives also status messages uh, you can use Uh, you get information about the power and there are information about the, let's say, current supply. And of course, the grid frequency. So that is also helpful to identify in case of any issue, where are the problems, where can you locate the problems, are these problems uh, on the grid side or um, is it a problem with the transformer? Is it a problem with the with the inverters, um, etc.? What you then, of course, have is uh, that you have uh, sensors um, which provide uh, weather data. Um, so let's make this uh, take a sun. So that's again a system uh, with the sensors. Um, of course, it depends uh, what is installed in the uh, in, in, in the field. Of course, mainly you should get radiation information um, well, with a high accuracy. So you need to, to, to use parameters to have a high accuracy. Uh, very often uh, you, you use or you have the cheaper uh, device, which is just a cell to, to derive the radiation on site. Um, what you additionally should have is the, the ambient temperature, uh, which helps you to identify uh, efficiency issues. Uh, you can use uh, the radiation and the uh, ambient temperature information to derive the module temperature uh, regarding the, the mounting uh, system you have. Is it uh, ground mounted or in case of any um, rooftop installation uh, also you can you can derive the module temperature and uh, then you have uh, additional weather data like wind for for example um, which can also be measured to typically then you have a, a weather station installed and all these uh, sensors uh, sensor data is the data from the transformer from the inverters uh, and from the modules are collected uh, by a data logger so um, let's say that's a that's a data logger. So 
the device which is collecting all this data stores the data and then typically this data is sent uh, to a server um, so that uh, the data is evaluated uh, is, is, is um, utilized by the computer system um, that uh, the operator or the customer can use this, this data um, taken from the data logger um, to, to identify uh, the actual status of the PV system. What you also should uh, try to do is that you get access uh, to the energy meter um, that depends on the energy utility. Um, but what, what you should have is uh, the access uh, to the data of the energy meter. Yes, this is the device which provides the exact values, the, the exact yield data which uh, are used uh, for the, the calculation of the revenue. So uh, in this case you have direct access to the energy meter. Um, of course it depends on the energy utility. Sometimes you do not get the access uh, to this data. Um, so on the one hand you can get uh, CSV files uh, provided by the uh, energy utility. Um, as they have access to the energy meter. Um, on the other hand, of course, you can uh, install energy meters uh, on your own in the PV system and uh, read uh, this information and use this information um, as the, the, the power and energy values which can be derived from the inverter values that are not that exact. There are some inaccuracies um, and uh, thus some deviation between the inverter data and the energy meter data. So, uh, of course, you should try to, to get access to this data as these are the most, uh, the, that are the relevant data um, for the calculation of the, of the total yield and the, uh, the energy production and finally, of course, the revenue the system is making. What are the requirements of a control center which uh, uses the collected data and visualizes the data? So has, let's have a look at um, let's call this the control center. Of a, a PV system. So let's say what you have is as a basic function. So what is the minimum? Of course, you need to map uh, the PV con configuration. Uh, of the PV system configuration so you need to be able to add all the information what is so which modules are used what is what are the inverters uh, what's the interconnection and number of modules in, in series number of strings in, in, in parallel um, the location of the system orientation inclination angle of the pv modules etc etc do we have subsystems so if you have a rooftop system which has the two different orientations of course you have to map this as well um, that you can see in this system um, what is the configuration of the of the pv system then the second issue of course that is the most important that's the visualization Uh, of all data. Of course, uh, on the one hand, in tables, uh, but that's not that helpful to identify issues. Uh, of course, uh, you also need uh, diagrams um, to visualize uh, the data. Uh, then, of course, the system should be able to um, do the alarm management. So, in any case of, of uh, problems, uh, the operator of the system shall not be responsible for the identification for alarms or malfunctions. Uh, this uh, control center of the system must do this on its own. So there must be an alarm management. So in case of any uh, problem with the inverters, uh, as the inverters are mainly uh, the, uh, the device which, which have uh, or show most uh, issues or technical issues. Um, the system must alarm, uh, provide a ticket, for example, um, and provide then the number of the inverter, the serial number, uh, the location of the inverter in the field. If you think about utility scale system, which have at least uh, 
tens or the hundreds of smaller inverters, you need to know what is the, the label of the inverter, where is the inverter located in the field, uh, of course, on the one hand, to identify and to analyze the problem, and of course, on the other hand, to tell the technician who is going on site where is the inverter which has to be checked on site. What you also need is, uh, of course, a repair and maintenance uh, management system. Maintenance management system. So if there is an issue, uh, the operator or the, the company who is responsible for the O&M uh, needs to have a system um, to know when has the problem be identified, when has the technician be informed, uh, or do you need any spare parts. Um, uh, and finally, of course, um, provide uh, the information in a report for the owner of the, of the PV system. Um, next, of course, you should be able to export and import data from this operating system uh, to export and, of course, import data. Uh, the export, I think, that's, that's clear. Um, um, the system is not able to provide or to do um, highly complicated analysis, so you need to be able to export the raw data uh, which are um, collected by the data logger and you need to be able to, to uh, export these data in CSV files uh, to uh, analyze this data uh, and get a more profound uh, possibility to, to analyze these data. Um, as the predefined tables and diagrams um, help you in most cases, but not in all cases, um, to identify any any problems. The import of data is also uh, important if there's any problem regarding the data communication between uh, the PV system and the internet uh, due to uh, um, uh, the cellular uh, cell of um, data transmission or uh, the DSL, for example, uh, you should be able to, to read all the data directly from the data logger. So the data should be stored, the raw data should be stored on the data logger. And uh, then you can take this raw data and import this to your system. And finally, what you should have as a basic function in the control center is um, a document man management. So the document management means that you uh, are able to, to upload all the relevant documents, uh, the interconnection plans, uh, warranty information, uh, contracts, etc. Uh, that you have one system where you can find all the documents and can have a quick look. Uh, that you are also able to, to do the reporting and have a location to uh, or where you can um, upload your your reports uh, for uh, later questions. So that's again very helpful if this can be done by the uh, by the monitoring system or the uh, control center. And then next issue are or what are advanced functions? Which are how very helpful. Uh, of course, on the one hand, uh, that you have online access uh, to the data logger. On site, so typically what you have is that the data logger provide or collects all the data and then send the data in a 50 minute uh, time interval. Uh, that's sufficient uh, regarding uh, the analysis of data uh, and the identification of more functions. But what you should also have is uh, the online access that you can get access to the live data, the live production values, um, that you can a deep, do a deeper analysis of the status of the system. So that's, uh, but that's only possible if you have online access to the data logger. Uh, in case of any uh, issue. Then it's very helpful if you have the system visualization. 
So that means that you not only have the diagrams and tables, that you'll additionally have a map of your uh, utility scale PV system. Of course, that's only relevant for large PV systems, that you have a picture of the system, that you know where the inverters are, and then you have uh, something like a traffic light, um, uh, red, yellow, green, for example, that you directly can see where an issue is, and then you can get an info, uh, and then you can do the analysis. Um, so that's very, very helpful. Next advanced feature or function is uh, the component warranty management. Warranty management. So again, that's um, something regarding the documentation of the system that you can uh, that you get information about any warranty um, information or warranty data. Uh, what's about the components? Uh, we have different uh, warranty uh, periods of the inverters uh, of the modules, and then that you get information about uh, the end of this uh, warranty time period. Uh, that you can do a check on site uh, before um, you lose any warranty um, um, of, of the components. And finally, what is also very helpful, um, which uh, to do analysis, is that you have a yield simulation. Uh, based on the system configuration, of course. So that the system is able to do yield simulations like uh, you do for a yield report, of course, and not on this high quality level, but that you get information regarding the radiation data, the, the, the temperature information, uh, what is the, uh, or, or what are the, uh, what is the predicted yield or the expected yield, and then you can compare these uh, values with uh, the yield which has been produced and then you also you can or you are able to identify any issues if there's a deviation you can have a look why or where where this devi deviation comes from of course you need to use local radiation data measured by the sensors um, to have a high accurate um, yield simulation um, to have one additional uh, or additional um, possibility to, to identify more functions. On these two um, images you can see examples for uh, the visualization you see in the upper part. Um, that's one example of a uh, control center uh, providing um, uh, the information for uh, monitoring of a PV system. So you see uh, on the top, you see a list with all um, components of the PV system. You have the system, you have the subsystems, you have the inverters, um, you even have the information about, about the string, so the current in, in each uh, module string of this utility scale system. Uh, you get information about the power or the current, depending on the device, of course, uh, the, the actual data. Uh, you see the data uh, or the, the, the daily sum, you see a normalized value so that you can directly compare these values and you see in, uh, marked in green everything is fine. You have some technical information about the system, so that's a, a 48 uh, megawatt peak system. The diagram on the upper right hand side shows in red the power production during uh, the day and in yellow the irradiance so you can directly see um, any uh, deviation from the radiation and the power production um, and finally on the bottom right hand side you see the normalized energy production of uh, each inverter so you see there are a lot of inverters installed outside um, the mean energy um, is 4 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak, so the energy is normalized to the still installed uh, uh, peak power of the inverter. Um, so what we have is, in, in this case, there are two inverters which show just one half of the expected uh, normalized energy, so just 2 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak instead of 4, and there's one inverter who doesn't produce anything. 
So you, now we can identify issues regarding the inverters and then you can go um, into a deeper analysis. Where does this come from? What's the reason why these inverters just produce one half or even no, um, no, no, no energy? Um, is it due to a data communication problem or are there any issues with the inverters or the, the modules uh, connected to the inverter? On the bottom, you, you see a visualization of the system. So that is the system. Um, you can see here these two axis tracking systems uh, installed in the southern part of Germany. Um, and uh, this um, diagram provides information about the status of each of these uh, two axis tracking systems. See in, in green, everything is fine. Uh, in, in red, there might be or there, there is a malfunction. No the system has identified an issue. Um, so you can click on this uh, on this uh, dot and have a look at the data. Uh, and in, in gray, there an issue has been identified. Uh, there's work going on, etc. So this this map helps you to uh, to localize the issues uh, to help the technician um, on site where he has to check uh, where he has to go. Um, in case of any problem. So that's an additional help you should have for utility scale systems. Of course, if you are talking about smaller systems, the rooftop systems, uh, you do not need that uh, deep data uh, for the analysis. Um, that's uh, not necessary. Uh, mainly you should have access to, to the inverter data you can see here in the upper part. Um, if you have a small rooftop system, then you typically just have one inverter. Um, so in this case, of course, you should get an alarm message on your smartphone, for example, or your mobile phone, uh, if the inverter has an issue. Uh, but you do not need to, to have a look at the system uh, continuously on a utility scale. Of course, there should be an operator who is taking care about the system and during the production period uh, from the morning to the evening. Um, to be very fast regarding uh, the identification of uh, problems. Now we want to have a look at the requirements and goals of uh, the operation management. So if you are taking care of a PV system, so what are the requirements of the uh, operation management? Or operation and maintenance company O and M. Of course, first of all, what what are the requirements if a company takes the responsibility of a PV system? Uh, the system must be free of any faults. So there must be uh, the system must feed into the grid. Uh, there must be uh, or um, a technical acceptance test of the PV system. Uh, information about the technical due diligence. Um, that the system is free of any faults. And then what, what are the goals of uh, the operation uh, management? Of course, first of all, the uh, rapid reaction on error messages. Um, so if there are any uh, failures, um, you have to react very fast. Um, uh, fast, of course, is the question of how, what is fast. Um, you should be able to be on site within an, an hour in case of a total failure of the system. So in case of any problem with the transformer or the grid, and then you should be able to be on site within an hours. Uh, if you have a more problem with just one module or module string, um, that's of course something you should fix fast, but you do not need to react within minutes or hours. Um, second issue uh, or the second goal is the uh, management and the performance um, uh, of doing the maintenance and all the repairs. So management uh, of uh, repairs and uh, maintenance work. So someone should uh, do uh, or organize the repairs, send the technician, help the technician on site, uh, prepare a report, of course, uh, organize the payment of, of the invoices. Um, and of course, you have to organize them the, the regular maintenance work uh, regarding landscape maintenance, for example, uh, regular on-site visits uh, to be sure that um, 
everything signed and that's the next goal of course regular on-site visits as you cannot identify all problems just by using a monitoring system uh, you need to be on site uh, for example to, to, to check what's about the fans of your, the PV system um, what's about uh, the situation after heavy rain are there uh, is there issue with the water uh, so you can't identify this just by using the monitoring system so go on site regularly um, again it depends on the size of the system uh, at least once a year if this is a small system and the larger the system is the more uh, often uh, someone should should go on site and, and check uh, of course um, you need to do um, you, you need to prepare the reports so uh, documentation um, of the of the repairs uh, and the maintenance so of course that's again very important in case of any later issue um, questions of the the owner uh, or the investor to the pv system uh, that you have all the information about um, done work so that's uh, called the system record sheet Um, that the system, uh, the monitoring system uh, or the control center provides uh, the possibility to, to upload all of these reports. Um, and of course, um, you, you can have a look at previously done work in case of uh, no function which occur regularly. Then you can identify uh, what has been done in the past and uh, can you identify uh, the reason for the um, repeating uh, issues you identify. Uh, of course, uh, the operation management is also the technical advisor for the, the system owner or the investor. Um, as the investor does not have the technical knowledge typically about the PV system, so you are or the company doing the operation management is the technical advisor um, to explain what's, what's what's going on with the PV system. So this diagram gives you an example how to do this uh, and data analysis. Uh, you, what, what you can see is uh, in this diagram the uh, energy production or day of three inverters. Uh, what you can see, they start operation in, in, at, in the morning, and then it fast increase. And you see the, the inverters have a different capacity, and at uh, one thirty, you see this blue inverter has an issue. The energy production drops to zero, so there's no power anymore. Um, the two other inverters continue to produce yield. You see the cloudy day with this ups and downs of the power. But you see this in the blue inverter has a no function so the, the system uh, sends an alarm message uh, to the operator that uh, this inverter doesn't produce any power anymore uh, and then you can start to do um, the analysis why this has happened is it regarding data communication issue or a technical function do you get any error message of the inverter um, about the reason what is happening and then of course you can send a technician on site uh, to to check this in the inverter um, turn the inverter on or repair the inverter or at least of course exchange the inverter um, to uh, get power uh, or to, to get the, the power from this uh, inverter so after all um, you've seen all the tasks during the three different phases during the planning phase uh, the construction phase and finally the operation phase um, what has been done by the different uh, participants um, in the different uh, phases uh, to ensure high quality of the system to get the maximum yield from the pv system um, so there are several tasks um, and uh, different types of, of jobs to, to be done 
um, by the technician, by technical experts. Um, and uh, finally, you can ensure that the PV system uh, can uh, produce the maximum yield and uh, generate the maximum revenue you can expect from a PV system. Uh, despite the capacity, um, so on the one, of course, utility scale uh, systems, uh, more work has to be done. But even for smaller PV systems, rooftop systems, uh, smaller household systems, um, you need to ensure that everything's fine, that someone is, is doing a regular check uh, on site, um, checking the module, the inverter and that there is a monitoring system which provides you data and alarm messages in case of any issue. Um, also to uh, reduce the, the periods of uh, failures or the timeouts uh, that you get uh, the maximum yield of these uh, PV systems.